Hi everyone. Uh, let us discuss this course subject engineering mechanics. You are aware of the meaning of engineering. What is engineering? Engineering is to solve problems for the mankind. It is serving the society. It comes out with a product. It satisfies the needs of the people. Something does not exist, the engineers bring into existence. This is engineering. Engineering means taking the physical laws, using the mathematics and proposing a solution to a problem. What is mechanics? Mechanics is a science which deals with the bodies which are addressed or under motion. When, it, when the body is subjected with various external forces so mechanics deals with the bodies at rest or in motion the condition of the body when it is at rest when it is in motion under the action of external forces okay so the mechanics can be broadly classified into mechanics of rigid bodies deformable bodies and mechanics of fluids so this is fluid mechanics this is strength of materials or mechanics of solids or solid mechanics Mechanics of rigid bodies is engineering mechanics. So in this course, we are going to deal with the bodies that are rigid. Then you need to know what is a rigid body. Rigid body, it doesn't deform. So it will not deform. More precisely, Say for example you have a rigid body, the distance between any two points is always constant under the action of external forces. So the distance between two points is invariant always. Then the body is considered as rigid body. The rigid bodies are broadly classified into statics and dynamics. What is statics? The body is at rest. Dynamics, the body is in motion. So the body is in motion can be further classified into kinematics and kinetics what does it mean kinematics if you are not considering the force that is causing the motion then that is kinematics of the rigid body kinetics one which is considering the force also if you are not considering the force, then what it means? So, uh, a body which is having, which is in motion, will have velocity, or at a different, at different times, the body may be in one position, then it will move to other position. So, the displacement, the velocity, the acceleration or dealt here 
That means we are not considering the force. When the body is in motion, Newton's second law will come into picture. So we are only concerned with the acceleration, not the force. If you are considering force also, then that is kinetics. So this is the broad classification of rigid bodies. So in module 1, module 1, we will discuss about the statics. That means the bodies are at rest. Again, the bodies at rest can be looked at two ways. One is the bodies can be assumed to be particle or the real rigid body. When we can consider the body to be a particle or when we have to consider this as a rigid body. Particle doesn't mean it is very small, tiny or some capsules. It is not a capsule. For example, you take a car. Assume it is a car which is moving in a curved path. I am interested in knowing the velocity or the speed of the car, the acceleration of the car, then the size and the shape is not going to affect the speed, the outcome. When the size and shape is not affecting the outcome, then we can consider this as a particle. For example, with respect to the fixed frame of reference, the sun, the motion of the earth is considered to be a particle. Say for example, you have a hook and using this hook, There are three ropes, three strings that are used to connect various bodies. If I am interested in knowing the forces acting on the crane hook, if all these forces, say for example this is the force direction, all these force can be meeting at the centroid of this hook, then this centroid point is considered as the concurrent point or the particle. So what, what is that my primary need here? I want to find out these forces. See if I have to design the crane hook then because of the force because of one force or because of the resultant we will we'll, we'll come to the point what is the resultant and all but if that force is rotating the body or the tendency of the resultant force is to rotate the body about the centroid or about any other point if we need to consider that point as well, that uh, rotation aspect as well, then the body cannot be considered as a particle. So it is basically a judgment by the designer. So when something is forced, when something is forced, if this is pulled, the tendency is to translate or it is translating, it is moving. General tendency is moving, translating. But along with that, if, for, say for example, this is a 
a table or uh, something, some, some rigid body, one force is acting like this, another force is acting like this, one more force is acting like this. If we can, cannot consider all these forces in a single point, then the tendency of the forces is to rotate the body as well. So in that case, the designer has a choice to consider the body as a rigid body. So it's primarily the choice of the designer. But the broader point is, if the shape and size need not be considered for the end result, we can consider that body as particle. If rotation need not be considered, then that can be considered as particle. So we have understood the mechanics can be broadly classified into three categories. Mechanics of rigid bodies, mechanics of deformable bodies, mechanics of fluids. Mechanics of rigid bodies, it is broadly classified into statics and dynamics. Dynamics can be classified for the analysis purpose, kinematics and kinetics. And under statics, that means the particle or, or the bodies at rest, okay, that comes under statics. So first we start with statics. If we consider the statics or dynamics, both the places, both the uh, classification, we can consider a body to be particle or rigid bodies. Now we begin with module 1, statics. So module 1, lecture 1, statics. Again, in statics, if we take particle, so certain class of problems can be considered as particles, others cannot, so that is considered as original body. In both the cases, okay, again, for the simplification of the analysis, class of problems or the problems, okay, considered to be two dimension, three dimension. That means all the forces that are acting in plane, like the forces acting on the board, then we can reduce, though it is a three-dimensional problem, we can reduce to two-dimensional problem. The forces that are acting in space can be thought as 3D. So for both particle and rigid bodies, we are going to deal 2D and 3D. So if we take first particle, two-dimensional case, in two-dimensional case, again I want to split into two. First, let us find out the resultant force. What is the resultant force? We will see that now. And then, Using equil equilibrium equations, we are going to find out the unknown forces acting in a system of forces, acting on a body. Okay. So, what is the resultant force? For example, we have a particle, we have assumed some rigid body as particle and say, assume F1, F2, F3 and F4, four forces are acting. The tendency of this particle will be translated in a particular direction. We do not know, we have to find out that. So, replacing with one single force, that is called the resultant force, without affecting the net effect of these forces acting on the particle. I am repeating, replacing 
all these force with a single force and that single force producing the same effect as these four forces producing on that particle so say i do not know i'm replacing with this because i mean uh, depending upon the magnitude of the force say assume it may be the resultant force okay in this direction the tendency of the resultant force may be acting in that direction so first we will find out what is uh, the, the resultant force that is acting on a particle then we will go to the unknown forces finding out unknown forces using equilibrium equations so first let us begin with finding out resultant force for that uh, i take a problem and then upon solving we will try to find out what is the resultant force see this problem let us solve this problem let us find out the resultant okay so first we have to draw the free body diagram i'll discuss after solving this problem i'll discuss what is a free body diagram and how to put all the forces in a free body diagram we'll discuss that after solving this problem so now there are four forces acting on this hook that means in the hook there are four strings that are used to tie something else okay so straight away the forces are given now let us understand how to define a force so force can be classified in different ways collinear force okay in this direction or in this direction you can assume a tug of war there's a tug of war people used to pull this side a group of people stand here and pull this side and collinear two cars collide one car is here and another car is hitting from the back two collinear forces okay and all these forces are right meeting at this point called concurrent forces so concurrent coplanar coplanar forces it is in a plane so it can be thought as a two dimensional problem and then you have parallel forces concurrent force means all the forces are pointing at a point okay and then uh, coplanar all the forces are in a plane collinear two forces in the same line and then we have parallel forces two forces or parallel or three forces or parallel acting in a body then that is parallel forces then we have non concurrent non parallel forces which are acting in two dimension as well as in a three dimensional space okay all are the classification of forces how to define a force force can be defined as a vector force is a vector vector will have a magnitude and a direction this force has a magnitude of 150 newton and it is 30 degree inclined to the horizontal x axis so it is a vector but generally vector is free always you can move this vector anywhere okay force is a vector but it is a confined vector or a bound vector that means it also has a point of application so magnitude direction point of 
application completely defines a force it's a bound vector later in this course when we discuss the rigid bodies we will also apply the principle of transmissibility and then we will say force will have a line of action in the same line we can put the force anywhere which will not affect the net effect on the body which we will discuss later so this completely defines a force okay now let us solve this problem again uh, when there are two forces acting on a particle we can use parallelogram law when there are three forces or more forces are acting we can use graphical methods the vector addition vector subtraction and so, so on and i'm not discussing those things here i'm going to right resolve these forces into rectangular components rectangular components and then i am going to add and uh, find out the resultant force we'll find out that so what is a rectangular component so we have x axis and y axis any inclined force i cannot directly add so what i am going to do i am going to resolve this force into a horizontal component and a vertical component i am going to resolve this force into a horizontal component and a vertical component i'm going to resolve this force into vertical component and horizontal component this is already vertical force it is not a inclined force so i cannot resolve this force so rectangular force rectangular components means it is 90 degree to each other only it is 90 degree to each other we can resolve or resolving the force is possible with the coordinate axis which is 90 degree to each other we know that okay so whatever is inclined we cannot directly add we have to resolve this and then we have to right use the calculation so how to find out the resultant so the resultant force when there are system of forces acting on a particular particular body okay the magnitude is summation of fx square plus summation of fy square Will give you the magnitude, okay? And then this is the single resultant force which replaces all other forces. So it will also have a direction. So the direction is taken as we will get the direction. This completely defines the resultant force. Now we'll find out, okay? i am going to resolve this into a horizontal component so f1 is 150 150 the horizontal components uh, component when this force 150 closes when it is coming here it actually closes the theta it is just for the remembrance okay just a shortcut if this force closes this 30 then it is cos closes c close c cos 30 degree immediately you have to put the vertical component you may ask whether the distance is correct you have to check that but i am not worried about the distance now i am just resolving this so let us not worry about the distance that will be useful when you are dealing with the uh, graphical method i am not drawing to the scale please pardon me so the vertical component for this force is 150 so when it is opening it is taken as sin okay so please see where the theta is generally students will have a tendency that always the horizontal force is cos it is not like that for example this theta is 60 if you are putting a theta here say 
this is the force 150 Newton okay if this is 60 okay this theta will close here this will come here 150 it will close 60 degree here okay in the vertical side that will become cos 60 cos 60 degree you have to put a horizontal 150 sin 60 the same theta we have to put so it depends upon where the theta is that is very important that is number one second generally people will have another tendency they will put 150 sign here but they will take this theta 30 that is also wrong okay so when you are resolving this you have to be little careful okay now i am going to find out summation of fx so for that i am resolving the commons now i am resolving this commonant this commonant horizontal component it is coming this side so this is the horizontal component at it is the angle with y axis so this will become sine 20 degree i hope you are understanding okay immediately put other component okay at cos 20 degree okay now you are resolving this force the horizontal force is 100 cos 15 and okay this line 100 sin 15 okay i have completely resolved all the four forces now forget you forget about these three forces but don't forget about this force which is already vertical okay now sum all the x components and sum all the y components general convention is right side positive upward positive for x and y axis respectively so we'll add all the components that is towards right and we'll subtract the component which is left side so summation of fx i am going to add summation of fx okay so i have 150 cos 30 this is also right side so plus 100 cos 15 degree also okay and then you have one more force in this x direction one more force that is one more force that is 80 sin 20 that is negative we will add that now f y to add all this so upward is positive so i am adding 150 sin 30 plus 80 cos 20 and this is minus this is also minus so i put minus 100 sin 15 and then minus 110 so we'll add all this we'll get the summation we get the magnitude as 199.14 newton when you are adding all this you are getting for 14 point 3 newton okay so the summation of fx summation of fy i have found out now you substitute here to find out the resultant so the resultant is 199.14 square plus 14.3 square and a square root it comes 199.65 65 newton okay so when you are substituting theta here okay this is 199.14 and this is 14.3 
we get theta as 4.1 degree. What does it mean? What does it mean? So the resultant magnitude is 199.6. Let us now take this particle. Okay, I'm taking that particle. The x-axis is 199.14. Okay, it is positive, so it is right side. And this is also positive, so it will be upward. This is 14.3 Newton. So the resultant is okay. You draw the parallelogram. This is R. This is the resultant. It is 199.65 Newton. The angle is 4.3. Degree. You understood the resultant direction and the magnitude is this. Okay. So replacing all the four forces with a single force, the effect on this body will be in this direction. With this as magnitude and 4.1 degree as the theta value or the okay and subtended with x axis okay fine now sometimes it may come negative also then you don't have to confuse with positive negative if you are familiar with the quadrant then you can still take as positive you only you can take the magnitude and having known this as negative it will come down and the theta will be right since it is tan theta so that tan theta will be the resultant forming with the horizontal component okay sometimes it may come this side also so you have to be careful in some books always the theta is taken from the first quadrant positive x so they will always take anti clockwise anti clockwise like this and so on right you have to understand that right clearly so this completes the discussion of the resultant i hope you have understood how to calculate the resultant thank you